A friend of mine just finished her boot camp a month or so ago, and I she wanted me to take a look at her portfolio. And, and I wanted to reference what I did in some of my projects because I couldn't remember. And I looked at my portfolio, guys, and oh lord, does it need some updating? <sighs> I don't know a single person that likes updating their portfolio. Even when I was in interior design, I did not want to update my design portfolio. Whatever creative art that you are that you require a portfolio, updating it is like awful, <laughs> is debilitating almost. So I'm not updating it yet just because I don't have the projects that I would want to put in it. I would want to put into it yet. But I wanted to just go through and offer some tips on what I would change things that I think I'm doing really well in my portfolio, kind of answer your guys' questions and then just walk you through one of my projects while I go over all of that at the same time. Okay, before we go over specifically my case study and my example, let's just go over some basics. UX case study 101, let's call it. Just some quick fire questions that I get a lot in some of the comments on my videos. One of them is, what is a case study? It's really just like a detailed account of a project, almost like a book report, you could say. Typically, it'll go over the background of the project, the objectives, the research methods that you use, the design decision that you made based off some research. It'll include what are some user problems, the goals, hypothesis. You'll have your sketches, you'll have your high fidelity designs, you'll have it all. It's pretty much just like a wrap up overview of a project that you worked on. And I think coming from bootcamp, a lot of people think of it in that lens because you're almost like summarizing everything that you just worked on. Where should I put my case study? What website, what format? Honestly, it does not really matter. I feel like a lot of them are similar and they accomplish the same thing. So whether you wanna go through Wix or Squarespace and create your own website, my portfolio is on UX Folio. I just liked it. It was a recommendation from my mentor going through my bootcamp. I liked it. I haven't updated it since really, and maybe I will once I actually go through and update my portfolio, but right now I like it. Sometimes technology could be a bar barrier to entry, so some people just do it on a PDF. You really just have to think about, it doesn't matter where your portfolio and your case studies are housed, it's just a matter of how am I going to share this? Is it going to be a link? Is it going to be an attachment? That's really all that you have to think through. How many case studies do I need in my portfolio? I would say probably two to three if you're just starting out junior level just graduated boot camp but make sure they're your like the best ones like don't put in maybe your not so great first project compared to the fourth the fourth project that you did that's a little bit more polished i go with that if you have some more experience under your belt i'd probably say three case studies let's go over some tips that i'd recommend for you guys and i'll show examples of the things that i did that i think really work well in my case studies getting it done is better than it being perfect I can't even tell you guys the not starting and like, oh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start, but I want it to be perfect. No, just cut that out, which leads me into my first tip. Just start drafting it, guys. Even if it's a Word doc or on your phone, just anything where you can just put down your crappy ideas of what you want to put in. Because the first draft is always going to be pretty crappy. Do you remember when you're writing um, papers in college? That would always be my go-to. I had no idea exactly how I wanted to format it. Just write it all down and then go from there. There's kind of a balance of not showing just the end product, but then also including your kind of process work. You don't also want to have too much process work and not enough end designs. You know what I mean? Like you want to have like the good visuals because ultimately the sketches and the wireframes are important, but the hiring managers wanna see your initial thought and like what the end product was. Again, it does not have to be pixel perfect. Like you don't wanna just focus on like, this is my pretty design. You wanna show how you got there. And to piggyback off of that, you wanna show kind of your overall designs, like maybe in something that's a little bit blown out, you can see all the frames that you've created. I also think it's important to kind of zoom in on a couple frames and pinpoint exactly what you did to that. So in this situation here, I'm showing like the different iterations. I think I could even improve that by showing specifically like what changed, outlining that a little bit more. I think it's nice to see high level, but then it's really impactful if you show this is exactly what this frame is and exactly what it's accomplishing. Another tip to just make it look really polished is to put the designs into the frames that they 
are designed for. What I mean by that is if you're designing for mobile, design comes across a lot stronger when it's not just in a rectangle, when you actually put it in a frame. If you're using Figma, which you should be, there are so many frames that you can pick and choose if it's like desktop, a tablet, iPad, like all of that. Use those frames because it just makes it look nicer and it kind of helps them visualize, okay, this is what the end product is going to be. So just a tip to kind of really polish it. Now I'm going to show you what I would change in my case studies. And there's a lot of things. Before I get to that, I just wanted to shout out Springboard, who is sponsoring this part of the video. I did my bootcamp through Springboard. I did their UX UI program. And this is where I created pretty much all of my case studies that you guys are going to see here and that you have been seeing. I think they do a really good job of teaching you the foundation of how to create these. I feel like I had really good case studies out the gate. Now that I've been in this role two years, I'm reflecting on things that I've currently learned that I've changed, but they give you such an amazing foundation, guys. If you are starting out and you're a junior designer, they do a really great job of really laying that groundwork of what needs to be in this case study. If you want to take the same program that I did, the next cohort date begins May 6th, but the deadline to be in that in that class with all the other students is May 1st. So check out the link below to get $1,000 off any of the programs using code Stephanie M. And also check out the link down there too. It's going to explain more about their job guarantee. Long story short, if you put in the time, you apply to the jobs, you complete the bootcamp, you do all the outreach that you need to. If after a certain amount of time, I believe it's six months, you do not get a job, you get all your money back. All that tuition comes back to you. Universities would never right now, okay? So they have a lot of skin in the game. They're as invested in you doing well as you are. So I really think that's a cool thing. So if you guys are eligible, check out the link below and take advantage. Now let's get to the real juicy stuff where I'm gonna talk through what I would change. There's a lot, so let's just get into it. First thing that I did not even think about at all is make sure you're thinking of your audience who is going to be the person that is going to be seeing this portfolio and design your case study with that in mind. Just like you're designing your design projects and your features for the user. The user in this case of your case study, your portfolio is going to be the hiring manager. And that specifically is going to be the design manager, most likely rather than like an HR hiring manager. People that are reviewing your portfolio or case studies spend anywhere from one minute to five minutes, max, max, max. So think about what is it that you're trying to get them to notice about you? What are you trying to capture? I looked at so many other people's case studies and portfolios of, as I was putting mine together, which is not a problem, but I think I let it affect me too much in terms of how portfolios and case studies had to be laid out. So I had the, you know, step of research, define, ideate, design, test, like I had that laid out and I just went like, okay, boom, doing it, doing it. I feel like I was more checking the boxes and really thinking about, is this the process that I'm doing? You just kind of learn that with time. So this is where I was at then, and that's okay. Instead, what I would do is that I would probably open up a Google Doc and write down everything that I did, and then kind of break it down into what I knew needs to be in there. The title, the overview, the problem statements, the pain points, the goals, the designs, and then what my end results is, testing, all of that stuff. That is what I would put in there in a Word doc. And then the next thing I would do is I would look at my Word doc and then look at all the design artifacts that I have, whether it's the research, the sketches, the interview scripts, anything like that, then I try to like kind of match up the two and see where things fit in. I think that's just a much better way of storytelling rather than just like checking the boxes. Yeah. Make sure your best design is on the top. Not that I don't think what I'm showing is a bad design. I don't know if it's the best that I did though. And I think a part of me was wanting to like, oh, let me hold back and like save the really good stuff for the end. Nobody's getting to the end, girl. Nobody's getting to the end, probably. They're scrolling and they might see it, but put the most valuable, the most, the punchiest design that you have at the top, because that is what they're going to see. Make sure just some like a tiny, like housekeeping things. Make sure everything is in proportion, that your text isn't too big compared to the images. I I think I really struggled with that in terms of I wanted things to be prominent, but then I also felt like I was constricted by the size of things and I didn't want it to be, you know what I mean? So maybe that's something that could dif differentiate the different websites, the different options that you choose between where you're going to be housing your portfolio. Maybe one has more flexibility than the other. Honestly, Figma should come out with a portfolio builder. Figma is just 
a magical tool because everything is flexible. You've got the grids where you want, you can put anything where you want it to. And I just, nothing feels as good as Figma does in terms of layout, but here we are. So just make sure that things are in proportion because I definitely struggled in those areas. And then a thing that I think would be fun to include are just some animations. And I don't mean anything crazy. I just mean even like a couple loading screens, that kind of fun play on things because I think when we're designing, we're obviously thinking very 2D. We're like, okay, like this, and then this, and then this. I think some level of animation would be really nice. Not really required, but just something that I noticed as I'm looking through some of my projects that I think could use a little bit of a, a little bit of a pop, let's say. Hopefully these tips are helpful in creating your case studies, improving upon your case studies. I will do a video eventually once I update my case study. I don't really want to do it, but I will update you guys once I update my portfolio. Don't forget to check out Springboard. Link is down in my description to get $1,000 off any of the programs. Check out the UX UI design program that I did. And speaking of, when you're applying for jobs, are you aware of the difference between a product designer and a UX designer? If not, check out my last video where I go over the job title, the roles, the responsibilities, and most importantly, the pay between a UX designer and a product designer. I'll see you in that one.